Yeah, it haunts me. A chilling secret buried deep. On the barrels, it's a chemical type, Agent Orange. Soldiers who stayed silent for more than 30 years. Nobody believed them. They hid it, they lied about it, and they're still lying about it. Until now. Shoot shut up, shoot shut up. So we are not prepared at this point to say that uh, uh, the allegation is untrue. Did simple actions from long ago leave behind a legacy no one could have imagined? I'm Tammy Leitner reporting from Seoul, South Korea, and welcome to this CBS 5 Investigate special uncovering toxic secrets. It started with a simple confession, a valley man wanting to clear his conscience, and it ends here a half a world away with allegations of a government cover up, people possibly being sick from a toxin that's long been forgotten, and one man just wanting to make things right. The story begins in a tiny ramshackle trailer in Apache Junction with one man, a self-proclaimed outcast, a biker more comfortable on society's fringe. Why I'm like I am is because I come home and uh, you know, I couldn't live with what I'd done. Steve House can no longer bury his secret. Nobody seems to give a shit. excuse my French, but nobody seems to care. I've wrote Senator McCain's office, I've told the VA about it, but uh, yeah, it haunts me. The year was 1978. Steve House was stationed at Camp Carroll in South Korea. He was just 22, but soon entrusted with a covert assignment. They handpicked us. There were six of them. The soldiers were ordered to wear gas masks, but didn't after several of them suffered heat exhaustion. House, a heavy machinery operator, says he dug a ditch nearly the length of a city block. And what happened next? They started bringing out uh, truckloads of 55-gallon uh, drums, four to a skid. OD green, Army uh, green 55-gallon uh, drums with bright yellow. Some of them had bright orange writing on them. Some of the cans uh, that said uh, province of Vietnam, compound orange. A chilling confession. Considering the toxic defoliant was used during the Vietnam War to wipe out entire jungles, it was also sprayed in Korea along the DMZ, which divides the north from the south. The herbicide was so harmful that the government says the excess Agent Orange was incinerated at sea. There was a smell, uh, I couldn't even describe it. It was just sickly sweet, I guess. We traveled across the U.S. to track down the other soldiers involved and to investigate whether a deadly toxin the government says was burned at sea could have secretly ended up buried on a U.S. military base in Korea. Had a striped brown barrel dated 1967 for the Republic of Vietnam. He said, you're not going to believe this. He said, but I got a whole truckload of Agent Orange. And we were like, why is this in Korea? What is this? Robert Travis says he transported the drums from a hazardous material storage warehouse known as the War Depot Zone to the ditch where they buried the leaking drums. The barrels I remember seeing were dated 67, this was 78, and already eaten through metal. You know, I figured it's ate through most of the drums. At the time, Travis had no idea of the lasting effects of Agent Orange, and neither did the others. My foot swelled up basically overnight and I couldn't walk, and, and that's when my trouble started. Richard Kramer served alongside House and Travis, that's him wearing tennis shoes because his feet went numb while on the secret burial. Eventually, he says, he collapsed and had to be flown to a military hospital where he stayed for two months. But oddly... All my medical records from Walter Reed uh, came up missing. Everybody in that same platoon that we can get a hold of has no medical records. That's too coincidental. Another coincidence? All three of these men are extremely sick with illnesses known to be caused by Agent Orange exposure. I had a rash all over my body. It was just red rash. Yeah, I mean, it's never totally went away. I have a swelling of the ankles and uh, toes. I have chronic arthritis in my back. Then the diabetes started coming up and I've had problems with skin rashes. They say a direct result of what they buried on this base more than three decades ago. Did what I told to do, and that's you know the, the military way, do what you're told. I served my country for eight years, but out of those eight years, for at least a week, I was a guinea pig. The least I could do is take care of it. 
but they're not going to. We basically buried our garbage in their backyard. That ain't right. Steve House was just a young man the first time he set foot in South Korea, and he says he was just following orders when he buried several hundred drums of Agent Orange. And though it was many years ago, this Valley veteran says the memories are still fresh, and the time to return was now. A little nervous. This former soldier has reason to be nervous. 33 years, long time. The last time Steve House was in South Korea, he says he secretly buried a deadly toxin on a U.S. military base. And he's well aware of how many unsuspecting soldiers and Koreans may have been exposed. But he wants to make things right with this long overdue homecoming. The Korean media has covered this story fervently since we broke it. What was it like coming back here? A lot of the feelings come back. Steve's confession and our investigation triggered an international controversy that could affect U.S. relations with Korea. For the last three months, protesters have taken to the streets outside Camp Carroll. Banners criticizing the U.S. surround the base. A joint investigative team of high-ranking U.S. military and Korean officials have been testing the soil and water on and around the base for months. This was the first area that was tested. You can see this is from the grid. They drilled in this area in about 40 different spots trying to determine if Agent Orange is buried here. What was found? Dioxins, the most toxic part of Agent Orange that has been tied to cancer and child deformities. But the Army says the dioxin they found is not linked to Agent Orange. They did find, though, that the water off base is contaminated with potent industrial solvents. As a result, at least one well was sealed off. And for the first time, the military admitted bearing more than 100 toxic chemicals, pesticides, and defoliants in 1978. We're told these toxins and 60 tons of soil were dug up and removed the following year, although there is no record. This is the moment Steve House has wanted, but also dreaded, for so long. Approximately about a semi and a half. He studies a map of the area while surrounded by two dozen U.S. and South Korean officials. And in just 20 minutes, it's over. The veteran who flew all the way across the world to identify the exact spot where he says he buried Agent Orange is not allowed to walk the heliport or even given time to get his bearings after not having been on the base for three decades. But Steve tells us they won't find remnants of Agent Orange where they're currently digging because he says the military is looking in the wrong spot. He did provide uh, information, uh, additional information on a uh, location where he claims to have uh, made a trench that uh, Agent Orange was subsequently buried in. Colonel Joseph Birchmeyer heads the joint investigative team looking into the Agent Orange claim and says after Steve's visit, they plan to dig in the new location Steve identified. You guys have said that you have not found any Agent Orange, but you've never come out and said this didn't happen. No, I, until uh, the invest, if, the, if we could make that claim that this did not happen, the investigation would no longer be proceeding. Um, so we are not prepared at this point to say that uh, uh, the allegation is untrue or it didn't happen. But in fact, for nearly 20 years, the U.S. military did know this base was contaminated, but kept quiet. The military has been under pressure to release these reports since we started investigating. This military report shows there were numerous chemical spills on the base during the late 1970s. And two military studies show that there was widespread contamination of the aquifer throughout the base. Cleanup would have cost $93.8 million. The Korean government was never notified of this. That feels like a cover-up. Well, now we have to be a little bit careful here. Um, there was uh, indications that uh, there was a TCE, PCE problem that we had to modify um, or we had to um, take actions at our wells to make sure that the water, drinking water was safe for, um, for the people living on, on the post. Um, but you're right, there is no indication that we notified the Korean government or the Korean people uh, about that, and I can't really speak to why that occurred. But for one veteran, the time for answers has passed. It brought back a lot of emotions because of the, the way I felt when I did it to begin with, you know, brokenhearted. Now, he says, is the time for action.
Now that you've come and walked the base, do you think you'll finally be able to find some peace? No. Because now I have to live with what they're finding downstream. So the question becomes, what about the families, the children, and the people living near the military base? What we found in just one afternoon surprised us. That story is coming up as the CBS 5 Investigate special continues. I'm Tammy Leitner, and you're watching a CBS 5 Investigate special, Toxic Secrets. Steve House and his fellow soldiers are all sick, they say because they buried Agent Orange years ago. But we found they're not the only ones that are sick. In the small village where the base is located, we found a reoccurring problem. Children sick with leukemia. 12-year-old Dahi Bong writes poetry about flowers and trees and hope. She hopes to go back to school and hopes to play with her friends. But most of all, she hopes she won't have to go back to the hospital. She would cry and just say she wants to live. I'm so sorry. Han Suk Kim takes her daughter to the hospital every other week to be treated for leukemia. I don't know what to do. Kim's daughter got sick in 2006 when the family lived in this apartment complex across the street from Camp Carroll. When my daughter got sick, I had no idea. Now that the defoliant issue is here, I feel like it may be the reason my daughter is sick. Since allegations surfaced that American soldiers buried Agent Orange on this military base, the small village of Wegwan has been thrust into the middle of an international controversy, and residents worry they've been exposed for years. I am concerned for the people of our county. Chairman Kyung Ho Kwok says he's seen a high number of unexplained illnesses in his county. The stream near the base leads to the Nakdong River. So I believe that if the Agent Orange is buried there, it could have caused illnesses. He says the county is conducting their own investigation because he believes the U.S. military has not been forthcoming. But this father, Song Chul Park, says he doesn't need test results to tell him what he already knows. Both his sons are sick. I wish this tragedy had never happened. Park's oldest son, Young Bum, has autism, and his 13-year-old son, Young Wook, has leukemia. I want to play with my friends without any worry. Young Wook spends his days in front of the television or on the computer. He doesn't have many visitors because of the risk of germs. What's this? TV. Very good. Very good. Thank you. <laughs> you do speak some English. Song Chul Park takes us to where he once lived with his sons, in a little house now nothing more than an overgrown field. He points out the defunct well where they got their water. So did you drink from this well that was over here? Yeah. Yeah? Yes, I drank this water. Everybody drank it. I cooked rice with it. It was part of our daily life. Just over the fence, a few feet away, Camp Carroll and a stream where Park would fish with his sons. Locals tell us in the past they've seen oil floating in the stream coming from the base. Now the obvious problem here is the crops growing right on the bank. The effects of Agent Orange exposure are well documented. The deadly herbicide has been linked to 15 different conditions, including birth defects, nerve disorders, and cancers, including leukemia. We thought it would take us days to find people that were sick in this village, but within just a few hours, we found what appears to be a pattern of sick children with leukemia. According to the Korean government's own statistics, between 2005 and 2009, the cancer death rates in the area around the military base were higher than the national average, as much as 17 percent higher. And the number of people dying from nervous system diseases was also well above the national average as high as 73% higher. We formed a team of doctors from Seoul, lawyers and residents. Mon Ho Lee chairs a group of local businesses in town. He's launched his own study to find out why so many people are sick. He fears it's a result of drinking water contaminated from the base. 
Back then, people had no idea that defoliant might be the cause. Right now, because of our research, we believe the defoliant is the reason, so we're shocked. There used to be a well right here, and two families shared the water from that well. One child was born with disabilities and later died. The other died of leukemia. Both families blame the water in that well, and the reason this is significant? Camp Carroll is just 200 yards down the road. My son got sick in 1989, and he died in 1990. Young Yi Yu's son was just 19 when he died of leukemia. At the time, everyone used the water from the well, so no one suspected it. Now I think the well might have caused the illness. Yu says she burned all the photos of her son, except these few, because they're too painful to look at. And even now, a decade later, she's left wondering why her son got leukemia. I think the defoliants caused it. A very real fear for parents in this village. And for these sick children who are still too young to understand what they're battling, there is still hope. Just ask Dahi Bong. <laughs> You've seen the physical and emotional toll of these so-called toxic secrets. And locals in South Korea tell CBS 5 Investigates it reaches even deeper, impacting their economy as well. We talked to several residents who say since the story broke, real estate prices have dwindled as well as produce sales. They tell us that's over worries of possible contamination from the water. One military base at the center of a firestorm, but it appears that's not the only place where toxic waste was dumped. What we uncovered, still ahead. This investigation started in the valley when a former soldier admitted that he buried toxic chemicals on a U.S. military base. So we traveled across the world to hear South Korea to uncover the truth. But what we found was a disturbing pattern of the U.S. military bearing toxins in this country. This scene is played out at U.S. military bases throughout South Korea. Activists upset about possible contamination caused by the U.S. military. We're here at Camp Casey where there's a protest going on. We were approached by military police. They asked for our ID and who we were with. We were concerned because it appeared that they were reporting us to someone. The U.S. has had a presence on military bases in South Korea since the end of the Korean War in the 1950s. And what was once viewed as a humanitarian effort is now being questioned. There is some concern, but it's in the back of your mind. Even U.S. soldiers here don't know what to believe. This soldier currently stationed at Camp Carroll asked we not identify him. We're keeping the newspaper articles just in case years down the road we have medical issues. And we're doing it just to cover ourselves, just in case the scientists and the technology that they're using is incorrect. But the issue extends beyond just one camp. I'm standing along the Imjin River just a few miles from the North Korean border, the very spot where one veteran says he ordered his soldiers to spray Agent Orange. We sprayed Ag Agent Orange there on both the north and the south side of the, of the river. Former Army Engineer Battalion Captain Phil Stewart says he ordered soldiers to spray 300 to 500 drums of Agent Orange and other chemicals back in 1968 and 1969. At the time, what did they tell you about Agent Orange? Totally safe, it won't hurt you. It's just to kill the weeds. You can take a bath in it, you can drink it, you can brush your teeth with it. The U.S. military admits only this. We do have very good records that uh, of, of Agent Orange entering Korea in 1968, 380 barrels, and uh, eventually being transferred over to the Rock First Army and used for her use along the DMZ. Army Colonel Joseph Birchmeyer says the defoliant was needed to keep North Koreans from crossing to the south. They uh, used all the Agent Orange that was brought into Korea at that point. Uh, and in fact, the, the reports indicate that they didn't have enough Agent Orange to complete the mission. They were assigned along the DMZ. But Stewart argues they also sprayed around Camp Ethan Allen and Camp Peterson, where he was stationed. This is what used to be Camp Peterson. It's now turned into a grocery store. But we're told that the helicopters would land here, fuel up, and from here they would go over and spray Agent Orange across Korea. We, we did a lot. Hmm. But you were following orders at the time. Yeah. Um, and and uh, But that doesn't change the fact that 
the government knew, the Department of Defense knew that there were dangerous properties to those chemicals. Mm -hmm. And they, they hid it, they lied about it, and they're still lying about it. Now imagine having to take all of those emotions and go before Congress. That's essentially what one Valley veteran had to do when he shared his story with the Korean National Assembly. There was no military cavalry. Thank you for your brave decision. Thank you. Only two former soldiers standing up for what they believe to be right. I hope the Korean people can forgive me for my part. Veteran Phil Stewart testified that he ordered soldiers to spray Agent Orange on and around military bases. This directly disputes the U.S. government's claim that Agent Orange was only used along the DMZ. Members of the assembly, those statements by the United States government are not true. Assembly members expressed concern and distrust. One political leader told the veterans that the Korean government believed the excess Agent Orange had been burned at sea until now. They haven't told the truth since way back then. It seems that the U.S. forces in Korea are not willing to pursue this in a fast manner, so I believe the U.S. Congress and National Assembly of Korea should join forces and investigate this issue. It's up to you to take it the rest of the way so we can get some answers for the Korean people and the Americans. Digging for facts on a story that's based half a world away is challenging. Add to it a military that doesn't want you asking questions and a torrential downpour, and things don't always go as planned. There was no way to predict a deadly storm would pound South Korea and Asia. Mother Nature has not done us any favors. Complete roads have been washed away, so we can't drive to Camp Carroll. We're on a train heading there right now. We're here, but we're having a problem getting inside the base. Yeah, hold on one second. Here it is. A security guard here, this guy's won't let me in, sir. They made us wait in the car across the street. We're literally not allowed to get out of the car. This is very controlled. Go, David. There are many more of these behind the scenes moments. Head to kpho.com. We've uploaded a ton of raw video plus personal photos straight from the front lines of this investigation. We'll be right back. So what comes next? Depending on what tests show, crews may have to dig up contaminated parts of the base. That base, only several hundred meters away from a popular river, used as a water source for major cities. If contamination is found, there's no telling how extensive cleanup would be. Expect the Korean National Assembly to bring this issue before the United States Congress, demanding answers as to why dangerous toxins were buried there in the first place. And the big question? Why wasn't the Korean government notified of the potential danger years ago? For one Valley soldier, his return to South Korea brought some sense of closure. But it's just one chapter in a story that will continue to unfold, in a story we'll continue to investigate. I'm Tammy Leitner. Thank you for joining us for this CBS 5 Investigate special, and have a good night. Yeah, it haunts me. Steve House says he was following military orders. We basically buried our garbage in their backyard. When he buried a dirty little secret on a U.S. military base. How many people has got kids that are sick or, or uh, died of cancer or some sort because they don't know what they're being exposed to? But after 33 years, this former soldier, who now is on the brink of death, is breaking his silence. <laughs> Because uh, if I don't make it through this, they're just going to walk off and nobody's ever going to know the difference. It was 1978. Specialist Steve House was stationed at Camp Carroll in South Korea. He worked as a heavy equipment operator and one day says he got orders to dig a ditch nearly the length of a city block. They just told us it was going to be used for disposal. But it was what they buried that House has never been able to forget. 55 gallon drums with bright yellow, some of them had bright orange writing on them, and uh, some of the cans, the, it said uh, province of Vietnam. 
compound orange. Compound orange, also known as Agent Orange, is a toxic herbicide that was used to wipe out the jungles during the Vietnam War. Years later, the military admitted also using this around the demilitarized zone in Korea. The government says the leftover Agent Orange was incinerated at sea. House claims that's not the whole truth, but 30 years later, it's one man's word. Unless... I can tell them what we did with it. Other soldiers remember the same thing. We buried it. We never thought nothing of it. You were under orders to get rid of this stuff because it was leaking. It was in a building. You need to get out of there. Robert Travis served side by side with Steve and now lives in West Virginia. It was approximately 250 drums, all OD green. On the barrels, it's a chemical type agent orange, had a stripe around the barrel, dated 1967 for the Republic of Vietnam. Travis remembers hand wheeling each barrel out of the warehouse. And this stuff was just seeping through the barrels. There was a smell, uh, I couldn't even describe it, it was just sickly sweet. And shortly after, he says he developed a red rash all over his body. His health has since deteriorated. My wrist and feet, I don't know how many times they just snap and they're weak. They told me I had then arthritis in my neck and back. So it was a defoliant. Dr. Nanette Ariema decides which soldiers qualify for the National Agent Orange Registry. How difficult is it to diagnose a soldier with Agent Orange exposure when the government won't admit that they dumped Agent Orange in Korea in 1978? Well, as I said, there's no way to specifically diagnose mm -hmm. a patient has been exposed to Agent Orange. Mm -hmm. The birth defects it can cause are well known. But there are also 15 cancers and diseases linked to Agent Orange, including diabetes and neuropathy. Steve House suffers from both. There are also um, many guys that have said that they developed extreme numbness of their feet while they were in the jungles. Which brings us here to the small town of Decatur, Illinois, where we track down yet another soldier whose story matches up and has similar health problems of his own. My foot swelled up basically overnight and I couldn't walk and, and that's when my trouble started. Richard Kramer's feet began to go numb while burying the barrels of chemicals at Camp Carroll. Me wearing, wearing my tennis shoes. <laughs> he was allowed to wear tennis shoes rather than the stiff military assigned boots, but even that didn't help. They couldn't figure out what was wrong with me. Kramer spent two months in a military hospital. Now, decades later, he still has unexplainable pain. I have a swelling of the ankles and uh, toes. I have chronic arthritis in my back. If the exposure to Agent Orange has made these soldiers this sick, could it also have affected the Koreans who live around the post? The proposed site where the waste was improperly buried is right here. We took the GPS coordinates of the burial site to ASU professor Peter Fox, an expert in groundwater contaminants. If this happened three decades ago, that they buried this stuff, is there still a danger? Oh, definitely. What will happen is the contaminant will reach the groundwater. And depending on the direction of the groundwater flow. If they're using that water for irrigation, that contaminants could be getting into the food supply on top of just the drinking water supply. Dr. Fox, what would it take to remediate this situation? The only way to clean that up typically is just to pump the water up and do pump and treat, wow. which with an insoluble compound like this could take 50 years. These vets don't have 50 years. The clock is already ticking on their final mission, exposing the truth about the toxic chemicals they once covered up. So what were we? I think we were the guinea pigs. That stuff's still sitting over there. I mean, it's, it's not gonna go away. If we prove what they did was wrong, well, they should fess up and clean it up and take care of the people involved. I have to have some major surgery. And uh, because my liver's so weak, they don't think I'm gonna make it through the anesthesia. I, uh, if, I if I'm gonna check out, I wanna make sure I'm checking out with a clean slate. Damn straight, I'm scared. Steve House has been living in fear since the dying vet broke ranks to clear his conscience. 
and revealed that he and other soldiers buried Agent Orange on a military base in South Korea. And he could not have predicted the firestorm that would follow. Protesters took to the streets outside Camp Carroll Military Base and 150 miles away in Seoul. The U.S. military admitted it buried drums of chemicals, pesticides, herbicides, and solvents on the base in 1978. And a high-ranking colonel flew in for an intense five-hour meeting with the man who started it all. When did you do it? Where did you do it? Do you remember who was in charge? Who was the chain of command? You know, how much? Do you remember what labels? You know, where did, you know, what part of the base to come on? House told the colonel what he told us when we first began investigating months ago. House says the soldiers were ordered to dig a deep ditch nearly the length of a city block with a flat base. The plan was to neatly stack the barrels, but once they realized the sand was too soft for that, they resorted to using a dozer to push the barrels into the ditch. I pushed it into the ditch, so everything flipped over, and it's all just laying there, all humble jumbled. Which could make any cleanup more difficult. But I think they were hoping they could just go in and, you know, dig it out and bring everything out nice and clean in one piece. But finding the right location may require that House and his fellow soldiers return to Camp Carroll decades later a chance to make an old wrong right. There was some mention if it came down to it, uh, even possibly getting all of us guys together and getting us on the actual site. House is admittedly cautious. I'm afraid to go back because I, I said they hate me, you know, for what I did. <laughs> and uh, he told me, no, no, no. He says, the Korean people don't hate you. He said, they think you're a hero because you had enough nerve to step up and and tell them what you done. He does not consider himself a hero. I'm just the poor schmuck they stuck with the job, you know, and I had no idea this was going to open up and go this crazy. In the meantime, he says he just wants the military to clean up the mess. I wanted the government to dress my uh, and take care of this nightmare I've had to live with for the last 30 years. You know, I don't want to poison kids or anything, and I don't want to hurt GIs. See, right? I'm sorry. It's not right. Steve House is referring to the chemical investigation reports that were released to CBS 5 Investigates following our public records request. They show without a doubt that the military did store and later bury toxic chemicals at Camp Carroll. Look at this. That's just the beginning. The military has been under pressure to release these reports since our initial investigation when three American soldiers spoke out about burying Agent Orange on the base in 1978. Our report sparked an international media frenzy. Our military and the Korean government started investigating and started testing the water and the dirt. According to this report, they buried toxic chemicals there for five years. Probably longer, but that's their story. So it wasn't just when you were there? No, you could see where they buried other stuff. I could see the blemishes in the ground. There was areas there that if you walked over, it would take your breath away. These reports released by the U.S. Forces Korea show the extent of the military's chemical cover-up. A 2004 report focuses on two areas of the base, Area 41 and Area D. Area 41 was a hazardous material storage area where numerous chemical spills were reported between 1976 and 1981. And Area D, which was where these vets said they buried Agent Orange, was identified in the report as a hazardous waste landfill. According to the report, more than 100 hazardous chemicals were buried there over a five-year period. Because they had us wear safety gear, gas mask while we were digging the ditch. And I didn't understand back then why they did it. It puzzled me. But House says this report explains it. They were afraid that we were going to get into something that was already there and they didn't want to have to explain 20, 30 dead GIs. Land surveys conducted in 2004 showed widespread contamination of the aquifer throughout the base and that it would cost $93.8 million to remove the contaminated soil. But the military knew about the contamination and risk to U.S. soldiers and the Korean people as far back as 1992, according to this report. There are also mentions of Agent Orange being stored on the base, 
but the military now says those records have been misplaced. I want to know who gave the order. I want to know who said six good American boys were expendable to hide their secrets, to hide their little dirty chemical mess that they made. No. No, this isn't, this isn't over. This isn't over. I'm Tammy Leitner with CBS 5 Investigates.